You can't really get much more Wild West than a good old county seat war. These were most common in places like Kansas or Oklahoma, places where the immigrants had just arrived as homesteaders. But out in Utah, you had two separate competing forces, the Mormons and the non-Mormons. And basically, as the story goes, with county seat wars, people are battling over, is City A going to be the county seat or is City B? And when City B is passed up, all the water, all the roads, all the government goes to City A, and City B basically declines over the years, the railroads pass over it, and it turns to nothing. All the farmers there truly suffer. But in Utah, you had the Mormons who had been here since 1847, and then you had Patrick Edward Connor and his folks who only came in in the Civil War. So when Connor came down, most of his folks were from the California gold fields. He had created the third California Volunteers, and all of his soldiers were gold prospectors. So they came in as non-Mormons, and Connor had a real contention with the Mormons and wanted to start an uprising among them. Back in this time, Mormons were genuinely very very, very hated. So Connor created what he called the Liberal Party, and the Liberal Party represented the interests of the miners. And the Mormons had the People's Party, and the People's Party was kind of the official outlet for the LDS Church. Now this was before Democrats and Republicans had come to sweep across the nation and become basically a two-party system. So the Liberal Party, through underhanded methods, I'll explain them later in the video, won in Tuella County, which was traditionally a very Mormon settlement. And they won because a bunch of miners had swept through here and discovered all the gold and silver mines throughout the county. And it upset the balance of voting. And basically, from the 1870s for about four years, Tuella was a republic. Behind me is the old Rock Tuella County Courthouse, which was built in the 1860s. And from 1874 to 1879, it was the seat of government of an unrecognized ephemeral country called the Tuella Republic. And as the story goes, the first people who were non-Mormons to settle in this area, the first actual white settlers, they were miners, they were soldiers, they were people who came with Patrick Edward Connor, and they came because of the Civil War. Connor was charged with setting up camp Douglas, and because all of his soldiers were only in California for the gold rush, he said, well, in your off time, you should go up to the mountains and try to stake a claim. Well, they discovered gold, and by the 1870s, they had huge mines operating out of South Tuella County. Behind me now is the grave of General Patrick Edward Connor, one of the men who was chiefly responsible for the creation of the Tuella Republic. And his story starts in California. He created the Third California Volunteers in an effort to go and join in the Civil War and fight and kill Confederates. Well, the problem with that is Lincoln ordered him to stay in Utah, and it royally pissed him off. He desperately wanted to go and, and fight for glory. So when Lincoln told him, you're guarding the California Trail and the telegraphs and you're just making sure the Mormons kind of don't start anything, he got mad and he saw that basically as an order to start a war with the Mormons and with the Indians. He committed the worst Indian massacre in history, the Bear River Massacre, and because his troops were all third California volunteers, they were all miners, he decided to tell them, go out to Tuella, go out to the hills surrounding Salt Lake City, and go prospect. Well, Brigham Young had known that there was gold here for a long time, but he didn't want to advertise that because gold would bring in miners and miners would bring in crime, murder, alcoholism, brothels, and he didn't want this. So basically what was happening is that Patrick Connor teamed up with a man named William Godby, and Godby was a Mormon who had fallen out with the church. Godby believed in this type of Mormon spiritualism, but he also pushed his own newspaper, which was pro-mining. He wanted to bring in the outside influence, and Brigham Young recognized, we can't do with the outside influence at this point in our history, so he excommunicated Godby for being this weird spiritualist. And Godbyites kind of died off as a religion, but sprang from them the Liberal Party, which Patrick Connor supported and kind of helped enforce. And the only places that the Liberal Party really elected politicians were in Tuella, where they maintained basically a Republic, where all the judges and all the officials were in charge for several years, and then a couple times they won an election up in Ogden because it was a railroad mining community and there were very few Mormons there. So it was, that was what it was as the Gentiles, the miners wanted more say in what was happening in the county. And Ofer, Stockton, Merker were all mining communities. Um, in Jacob City, kind of the four towns there right on, long, on the, in the mountain, I guess is what you put it, but 
So they wanted more say than what happened here in Tooele and Grantsville and E.T. City and Lake Point. And so they ran their own um, for county offices. They got their men that wanted to run for office and they ran, were running against the incumbents. <laughs> well, the, um, they knew they probably couldn't win. The state of Utah had a law that said that you had to live, in 1870, you had to live in Utah for six months before you could vote, which the libertarians, which was the Gentiles, did not break that law. They just brought people from all over Utah to vote. <laughs> they weren't breaking the law. It was, but um, they offered free drinks, which was not wa ice water or milk, um, to anybody that would come down and vote. And they actually would bring stagecoaches in. They came down from Korean, on the, the city of Korean, all these men to vote. Women couldn't vote, so they would bring them down, gave them a nice drink, and then they voted. Well, they were going to vote for the Libertarian, of course. So when it was all said and done, and they counted the ballots, there were more people voted for the Libertarians than lived in the county. <laughs> but the Libertarians won, legally, because they had only asked people to vote if they had lived here for six months. Um, the, the incumbents were up in arms. That just did not sit well, that they had got swindled quite so bad. And so they took over this city hall. So now you had a budding, head-to-head -head political toe-to-toe -to -toe competition between the People's Party, which was the mouthpiece for the LDS Church, and what they had freshly created for the miners, the Liberal Party, which was the mouthpiece of the non-LDS Gentiles, the miners, the businessmen, the out-of-state people who came in to turn a profit. And so they rigged the election. They had a governor of Utah, which was pro-Liberal Party because he was a federal appointee who was opposed to the LDS Church. And then you had judges coming in who were also federally appointed. So they approved of the election, even though out of a possible voting number of people of 1,500 in the county, 2,200 votes were cast. They approved the election on a federal level, and Brigham Young kind of let it slide until the territorial legislature could correct for this discrepancy. They said you had to be a taxpayer, but the governor said the fact that they've paid the poll tax is enough. So they counted those votes as proper. This government, this Tuella Republic, lasted 1874 to 79 until it could be corrected. And the only real remnants of it now is the Tuella County Courthouse. And when the new government of Tuella Republic came in, the incumbents, the people of the People's Party, they refused to leave. So the sheriff held up in there with his box of ballots, refusing to let them in until orders came down from Brigham Young that you have to open it up and let these new politicians in. And then when they were kicked out in 1879, you had the same thing happen in reverse, where the Liberal Party refused to leave with their box of ballots. But of course, they went the wayside and they only ever got a few more people elected in Ogden, which itself was a railroad mining community. Uh, this is a blip on the radar of Utah's political history, an independent state that existed in the mining communities of Tuella, which wasn't really able to govern itself because its politicians primarily were only experienced in mining and business. So they actually went to Brigham Young and complained about this. Now the elections were in November and they went to Brigham Young to complain about this and, and he could see that it was a swindle, but it was legal. Um, it was deceitful, is what it was. It was deceitful. But he told the guys, the incumbents, give it up, give them the books, and we will rectify it in the next election. So when they went to um, state, ele uh, the state Senate, Congress, what <laughs> bet, they changed the writing of the law that you had to live in the county that you were voting in not in the state <laughs> in the ter in it back then should clarify it would, would have been territory because you know, it was not a state and so you had to live within the county of the territory that you were voting so that couldn't happen again 
<laughs> so the the LDS party is the one that holed up inside of the courthouse for a short amount of time, yes, and kept and took the books and then they gave them all back. And when Brigham Young, who was over the LDS people, said, "Nope, that they won, give it to them, and then we'll fix the problem with the next election." So. Uh, it, it was only for a matter of, of weeks that they held up and wouldn't give them the books. So it wasn't the standoff for years. And so the Libertarians took over and ran the county for the next two, two years. And then there was another election and the LDS people won. <laughs> mm. Because the others did not have the population to, to swing the the ballot like they did. Then they held up in the county, in the building, and didn't want to give the books to the health, <laughs> to the end. So each incumbent didn't want it to share what they had. They had. So but there were no shots fired, no deaths. No deaths, no A lot of angry words, a lot of arrows of, of angry words, but there was no deaths. And um, it was proven, besides bringing people in, um, I laugh now because I kind of see with, you, with U.S. history happening at this moment. They came in with the county in very good financial status. There was money in the bank, everybody was doing good. When they left, we were like $12,000 in the hole. At the, it had not, they were minors. They were not politicians. They did really not did not know how to manage money and to do what a county was supposed to be doing. I don't know what they did in the county back then, but they spent all the money and then some. <laughs> and twelve thousand dollars in the eighteen seventies was a hunk of change for a county to have. 